Hello and good morning. CTS 265 section 840 students for the fall 2015 semester at Anne Arundel Community College for the CCMP route course. This morning's video tutorial is going to be on discovery activity number two which is configuring and investigating basic EIGRP and this is again another fantastic activity in the Cisco Learning Labs uh, setup where we actually get to walk through and take a look at enabling EIGRP and as you can see here on the left hand side I have the procedure up so if I were to click on procedure it would show up over here on your left and we've got a couple steps here it's actually going to walk us through a number of these steps so let's go ahead and jump in so step one is branch one we're going to go ahead and configure branch one for EIGRP and so here we are on branch one and it's interesting I really like the way that they sort of walk you through a number of different scenarios and different ways to enable EIGRP on interfaces so we're gonna go from user exec to privilege exec and then into global config and again it's very straightforward here so it's kind of you know want you to go ahead and, and configure it the way it's showing you so that you can see how EIGRP is gonna function and we're actually gonna take a look uh, at some debugs on not only uh, routers running 15.x code but some 12.x code we're gonna see some differences here specifically with our loopback interfaces so if I say router EIGRP 100 and let's remember that that 100 is the autonomous system number so this is a classic mode EIGRP configuration and again it differs from named mode in the sense that we're not providing a word so if I were to say CCIE or CCNP for the EIGRP uh, instance name that would be considered named mode when I put in 100 we're doing classic mode and remember named mode is 32 bit so the metrics are 32 bit values whereas I'm sorry named mode it's 64 bits and in classic mode it's 32 bits for the uh, metric values so let's go router EIGRP 100 we're gonna say network 172.16.1.0 and we're also going to say network 192.168.1.0. Now, there's something very important about the way that we just enabled EIGRP here. And it actually points it out here in the, in the text. So when I enable EIGRP in this fashion, you'll notice I didn't use a wildcard mask. So typically on the network 172.16.1.0, I don't want to do any kind of um, auto summarization, right? Or I don't want to have it set up at the classful boundary. I would have put 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.2, I'm sorry, yeah, 0.0.0.255, right? So that would be a slash 24. So, but we, it didn't have us do that. If you don't do that, if you don't put the wildcard mask in there, what's going to happen is EIGRP is going to interpret what I've typed, so if this is what this is all we type to enable the EIGRP process, um, what we would end up with is we're going to end up with the EIGRP process running on every network in the 172.16.0.0. And so to prove that, let's take a look over here and I'm going to jump on, let's see, we'll use router 6. So if I'm on router 6 here and I say show IP interface brief, you can see that I've got a set of loopback addresses already. Well, we're going to create some 172.16s and do show run section EIGRP. And you can see this is the named mode. But again, uh, for IPv4 with the named mode, uh, even in same thing as classic mode, I'm going to be using uh, the network statement. So let's go ahead and do this. So if I were to say interface loopback, um, and let's just start from, we'll say 10. So interface loopback 10, and I'm going to say IP address 172.16.1.1, uh, and we'll make these slash 24s. Interface loopback 11, and I say IP address 172.16.2.1, and then we'll do a third one, interface loopback 12, and we'll say IP address 172.16.3.1. So if I say do show IP interface brief now, 
So I've just created three loopback addresses, as you can see here. 172.16.11, and 172.16.31. So if I were to say, do show IP EIGRP interfaces, this shows me the interfaces on which EIGRP is running. And you can see here, it shows me the loopback addresses 410, 420, 430, 440, and 450. It doesn't show 10, 11, and 12. But what's going to happen if I say router EIGRP CCIE address family IPv4? And again, this will be the named mode, which we're going to be seeing after the Labor Day weekend. Uh, address family IPv4 unicast autonomous system. And the AS, that's a shortcut, right? If I do a question mark here, you can see that the options it shows are autonomous system and VRF. If I simply say AS100, it'll take, iOS is going to take that AS uh, to mean autonomous system. And so then let me go ahead and say network 172.16 uh, dot, and we'll put in here, you know, 145.0. And I'm going to hit enter. Now, you'll notice that that 172.16.145.0, that network does not exist. We did not create a loopback address uh, that fell within that network range. And so this is the point that I'm trying to drive home, is that without using the wildcard mask, what I just said was, interpret that. So basically what I'm saying is, hey, iOS, I want you to interpret what I just typed down to mean network 172.16.0.0 because again 172.16 is a class B so it's going to interpret it as a classful statement and we can prove that if I say do show uh, IP EIGRP interfaces now on which interfaces is EIGRP now running exactly it's running on all of those 172.16 addresses that we created because any address that begins with 172.16 that address is now going to have the EIGRP process enabled on it because we dropped in that statement without a wildcard mask so let's take a look what do you think it put in the EIGRP config section so show run um, section EIGRP, what do you think we have in there? Did it auto magically tweak it? And it did. Take a look at that. So the statement that I had entered in was, and I'll put I put in another one here. Let's put one in for the 10 dot network. So if I were to say network 10 dot, and we'll put uh, 234.242.88, and actually not 88, I'll just put zero. So if I put that in, right, what I'm saying is, I don't want it to be on the slash 24 boundary, which is what that appears to be, right, as we entered it in, because I didn't put the wildcard mask. I'm saying put it at the 10.0.0.0 slash 8 boundary. So do show IP, oops, sorry, do show run section EIGRP. What are we going to see? Absolutely. Exactly what you thought we would see, which is the classful entry gets placed into the config. And so, again, very important point. If you don't enter the wildcard mask, EIGRP is going to interpret what you entered to mean I just want it to run on every interface in the classful boundary. And that may or, again, so do show IP EIGRP interfaces. This may or may not be what you want because from here on out, if I entered, if I enabled another interface, let's say, you know, your manager comes to you and says, hey, we need a loopback interface for this. And I say, okay, interface loopback 99, and IP address is 172.16.234.88. Uh, uh, right? So I, I create that, or maybe this is an interface on the router uh, that you're, you're configuring. And so when I say do show uh, IP EIGRP, GRP interfaces. As you can see, if that was an interface out which I did not need EIGRP running, well, unfortunately, because of the network statement I have in my EIGRP section, what's going to happen is it's going to enable EIGRP on that interface because, again, it interprets it as being at the classful boundary. 
So definitely be aware of that. And fantastic that the uh, that the activity covered that. All right, so we're back here on branch one. And again, if I say do show run section EIGRP, you can clearly see that it went ahead and changed both of our entries to reflect the classful boundary for EIGRP. All right, so we've got it set up there. Let's go ahead and pull branch two up. So we'll pull the branch two router up and we're going to do much the same thing. We'll go from user exec to privilege exec to global config. We're going to say router EIGRP 100. And now we're going to enter the network statements a little differently. I'm going to say network 172.16.2.0. And I'm going to go ahead and declare this to be a slash 30 or a 255.255.255.252. Now, remember that when we're talking about the wildcard mask, right? And that is our wildcard mask right there. When we're talking about the wildcard mask, it's the inverse of the net mask. So the net mask for a slash 30 is 255.255.255.252, right? So if I were to put all 255s here, and this is how you can calculate the wildcard mask and actually they would have been up on top here so we'll go ahead and let me pull these back actually if I was to calculate the wildcard mask by putting all 255s subtracting the net mask from all 255.255 and subtract these guys I would end up with 0.0.0.3 .0 .0 .0 which is exactly what we ended up with up here for the wildcard mask value. All right, so let me clear the screen. And that's why we're using that 0.0.0.3. .0 so we're going to put the wildcard mask there. And you can see the neighbor relationship has come up. I'm also going to say network 192.168.1. I'm sorry, dot .2.1. And now we're going to use a wildcard mask of all zeros. And so this is the most restrictive of wildcard masks because it's going to match that IP address exactly, right? And so this is what you want to do when uh, maybe you're given a restriction, you know, enable EIGRP only on the interface with the IP 192.168.2.1, you would use the quad zeros because you're saying enable it Ex on that exact IP address, which would be tied to an interface. And so we put that in there. We should see an adjacency pop up here. And I'll say do show I or sorry, do show run section EIGRP. And so that is what our EIGRP config looks like now. And we have the wildcard masks in there. If I say do show run uh, or do show IP EIGRP interfaces you can see that well actually no adjacency I apologize the 192.168.2.1 is sitting on a loopback uh, interface so we've got these two interfaces configured here so now I'm going to step back over to a real Cisco 1841 router uh, and not that guy let's see here we've got another one there we want this guy here so I'm going to step back over to this guy here uh, who's a real Cisco 1841 router and I'm going to show you something else uh, and I don't and the reason I'm pulling up the real router is I don't want to put a bunch of uh, junk in the config here so we'll go ahead and we'll set it up here and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you that you don't actually have to use the wildcard mask if you know the net mask value that will also work as well and so we're going to go ahead and just for, well, it's a bogus network, I'll go ahead and say inter interface loopback 100. We'll say IP address 100, 100, 100, 100, and we'll make it a slash 24. All right, so do show, whoops, do show IP interface brief. And you can see there's our loopback 100. There's the IP address, and it's a slash 24. And it falls within a slash 24. Okay, so if I were to say router EIGRP CCIE, 
Address family, IPv4. Again, this is the named mode here, right? So our metric values are 64 bits. So if I say address family, IPv4, unicast, AS100 for autonomous system 100. And I'm going to say network 100, 100, 100 dot 0, 255, 255, 255 dot 0. Now I'm going to hit enter and it takes it. And watch what happens when we go back and say do show run section EIGRP. What do you think it's going to have in there? Absolutely. Take a look at that. It auto magically took the net or the, took the net mask for us and created the wild card mask. So on the majority of the fifth, and I, I've never seen this not work on 15.x code. So uh, this is 15.3. Again, over here we're on iOS on Linux, and this is uh, do show for 15.1 is what it should be. And there we are, yep, version 15.1. So again, let's take a look and um, and let me go ahead and give it a try here. I want to test it out, see if it works on this 15.1 that we have here. So if I were to say um, network, and let's do this. Yeah, let's throw a bogus network statement in here. So I'll say 10.11.12.0, uh, and we'll say 255, 255, 255.0. And then do show run section EIGRP and sure enough even on the 15.1 uh, iOS on Linux code that's gonna work so if you get caught and maybe you can't remember how to get the wildcard mask on the 15.x code you can actually put the net mask in now when you're taking the exams I would be very very careful when you are just say the route exam when you're taking the route exam I would be very, very careful about using the net mask. So again, it's not. I'm not. What I'm not advocating is you know you don't need to learn the wildcard masks. I'm just saying that in the real world, you can get away with the net mask. However, on the exam, it may force you to put the wildcard mask in there. So be aware of that and always check after you make your entry with a quick do show run section eigrp. And if the, that command is not available, then you know do a do show run or a show run to see what you've got. Okay, so if I say do show run or do show IP EIGRP interfaces, we've got it running on Ethernet 00, zero and our loopback interface. And so that takes care of uh, branch router 2. So now let's transition over to, and I'll scroll it up a little higher here. We're going to transition over to branch 3. So we'll pull up our diagram here and we'll jump onto the branch 3 router go from user exec to privilege exec and into global config and we're gonna say router EIGRP 100 now we're gonna set the EIGRP router ID so very similar to how OSPF is gonna go through its selection process EIGRP is going to follow right along with that same selection process so if there's no router ID set. So if I come over here to branch 2 and I say um, do show IP protocols and we take a look at and let me see I think that is not what I want. Um, yeah I'm sorry it is. Yeah there it is. I looked right by it. So uh, what will happen is if you don't have or so let's do it like this. So here's the priority for how the EIGRP router ID is going to be selected. So the first selection criteria is have I hard coded it in with the EIGRP router dash ID command. If I have if I've done that, that is going to be the EIG, uh, EIGRP router ID. If I have not hard coded it in with that statement, here's the selection criteria that it takes and it's just like OSPF. So, if I have loopback addresses configured, it will take the highest numbered IP out of the loopback addresses, right? So again, and it's not loop it's not when we create the loopback. So, and this is why I have this up over here. So, if I were to say do show IP interface brief, when you look at these loopbacks right here, so we'll start from loopback 6 to 450. When I say the highest numbered or highest IP on the loopback address, what I'm saying is which address do you think would be selected? 
you're absolutely right. This last one here, right? 192.168.50.10. But it's not being selected because that's the largest number, this 450 here. That is not what we're saying. What we're saying is it's the loopback address with the highest IP address numerically, which is this 192.168.50.10. Uh, and if I were to say do show IP protocols, when we can confirm this, we should see. Oh, and I think I'm, I apologize. I hard code. It's hard coded to six dot six dot six dot six. So there is. Let me double check that. Did I set that? No, that was the IP at the time. So let me do this. Let's say do clear um, e IP EIGRP neighbors. And let me see if it changes that. So do show IP protocols. And I'm thinking that maybe the only way to get that out of there, that 6.6.6.6, yeah, would be to remove the EIGRP process. So yeah, because when I had initially set it up, that was what I was using uh, as the router ID. So it's not a preemptive thing. If I were to reload the router, or and in fact, let me go ahead and let's do a, and we'll come back, I'll come back to it and we'll confirm that it does actually pick out the highest IP. We're not going to wait for this to reload, but but uh, the point being is that the EIGRP router ID it's going to be the highest IP address from all the loopback interfaces that's selected. And as you can see, that's what happened here. We have this loopback IP that we configured 192.168.2.1, and that is my router ID. So now to prove to you it's not preemptive, if I say on branch two, if I were to say interface loop back 99 and say IP address 99 99 99 99 and we'll make this a slash 24 if I say do show IP protocols whoops make sure we don't go by there you can see the router ID is still 192.168.2.1 and this is kind of what we're experiencing here on the on the router uh, behind the two windows that's reloading is that we had already been set with 6.6.6.6 .6 so it's not a preemptive process and I really there's only two ways to get that to change the first is is to wipe out the EIGRP config and then reconfigure it now that we have this other loopback address or to simply reload the router and both of those uh, you do not want to do during the middle of a production day right if you're trying to change your uh, EIGRP router ID. So let's talk about uh, what the EIGRP router ID is used for. Well, it's typically used to identify external routes or the originator of external routes, routes that have been redistributed right into the EIGRP process. And the router ID, the EIGRP router ID is one way to identify from which EIGRP router am I getting these routes. Right, and so that's where the EIGRP router ID comes into play. Okay, so that takes care of branch two and, we're, oh, I'm sorry, branch three. Let's wrap up branch three here. So the router ID is going to be 192.168.3.255. So do show IP protocol. So we've hard coded it. So what would we expect to see? And, oh, yeah, there we go. Router ID. 192.168.3.255 because we hard coded it. Now, what if I were to change that and say EIGRP router ID, and that's a 192, so we're going to say 209.165.22.22. What do you think is going to happen? So if I say do show, oops, sorry, do show IP protocols, did it change it? It did because I'm entering the router ID command. So remember, when it's hard coded, I can change it with the router ID command, but when it's the loopback addresses, it's going to take the first loopback, which is the highest numbered loopback, if I have not configured it with the EIGRP router ID command. So here we are back over on router six, which kind of timely, very timely here where it came right back up in time. So let's say show IP protocols, and if what I said was correct, we should see that our EIGRP router ID, it did not change. 
it kept it at 6.6. .6. Show IP or show run section EIGRP. And it's got to be because. Oh, I'm sorry. It is hard coded. It is hard coded. I looked right by that. So, yeah. Well, that proves that when you hard code it, it's going to keep that value. So, let's do this router EIGRP, CCIE. And we're going to say address family IPv4 unicast uh, AS100. And I'm going to say no EIGRP router ID 6.6.6.6. So there, we're going to unhard code that. I apologize. I interpreted it as a network statement the first time I ran by it. So we'll reload. We'll let this run in the background as we're continuing to work through here. And then we'll come back and we'll see that it's going to take the highest loopback address. So again, if the router ID is set, that's going the EIGRP router ID is set that is going to be your EIGRP router ID if it's not set it's going to take the highest numbered loop back and highest numbered but meaning the highest IP address that's ava that's up on the router when you enable EIGRP that would become your EIGRP router ID if you have no loop back addresses it's going to grab the highest up interface IP address and that's going to be your EIGRP router ID. And oh, you can see here, yeah, so it says the router ID is not changed unless the process is cleared or if the router ID is manually configured. So we've seen the manual configuration. Uh, we did do the clear. However, I had it hard coded. So when it comes back up, we'll go ahead and bring it up and I'll wipe out the uh, loopback interface it's going to grab. So let's go ahead on branch three and finish up here with our network statement and this is also one you'll see in OSPF that functions in OSPF is we're saying network quad zeros and then quad 255s and what does that mean? It basically means enable EIGRP on every interface on the router that is that has an IP address assigned to it because again here I'm just saying what this quad zeros and then the quad 255s mean it means enable EIGRP on every up up interface so if I were to say do show um, IP EIGRP interfaces what are we going to see that on the serial interface and the loopback interface which are do show IP interface brief the only interface is configured right we can see serial 00 and loopback 0 to enable EIGRP on every single uh, interface that is uh, has an IP address on it so this is all interfaces on the router that have IPs assigned those interfaces are going to be running EIGRP. All right, so now we're going to step over to the branch one router and we're going to take a look at some verification. So on the branch one router, if I was to say show IP EIGRP neighbors, you can see it lists out the neighbors. We've got the uh, the H column or the hold column where it shows uh, the neighbors in numerical order starting from zero and then it would be one and then two. You've got your uh, address and again, I'm not gonna read each of these out as you can see them over here on the lab side. But the key thing to notice is on the interface, it shows the interface to which the peer is connected. So this is my serial zero zero interface. So if I say do show sorry about that. If I say do show IP interface brief on branch one or just show IP interface brief on branch one you can see that they're talking about my serial interface right. However this 172.16.1.1 that is the address of my peer right. So that's the address of my peer and I'm I'm able to see that peer and establish the adjacency out my local serial zero zero interface right shows how long the adjacency has been established shows my hold time in seconds and remember the hold time is three times the hello interval and the hello interval is five seconds by default and you can also see and so to see that if I said show IP um, EIGRP uh, neighbor detail I believe or not detail I'll show IP uh, EIGRP interfaces detail yeah interfaces detail sorry about that and here's where you're gonna be able to see uh, your hello time you see some counts here 
and you see right there the hello interval is five and the hold time is 15 so every five seconds a hello packet is being sent and EIGRP will hold for 15 seconds which means if after three missed hello packets if I haven't received a hello packet and I've missed three the hold timer will expire and the adjacency will be torn down between the EIGRP neighbors all right so then let's take a look at the and we did the neighbors neighbor detail interface details so let's do a show IP EIGRP EIGRP neighbors detail and you can see here we get information about the version of EIGRP how many retransmissions retries how many prefixes we've learned so if I say show IP route EIGRP I should see five prefixes and there they are all right um, let's now go down to the next step here so on branch one we did take a look at the IP EIGRP interfaces already we took a look at the detail as well and we did see the um, the hello interval so we'll go ahead and move to number six on the headquarters router so let's pull the headquarters router up here and we're gonna go from user exec to privilege exec we'll say show IP protocols and so again this shows that EIGRP is running with the autonomous system number of 100. So routing for networks, it gives us the quad zeros, and then routing information sources, so who are we learning EIGRP information from? And it's gonna be these three branch routers. So if I were to say, show IP EIGRP neighbors, right? You can see that there are the IP addresses that correspond to whoops there are the IP addresses that correspond to the listing that we have above 3.2 is here right so 2.2 .2, we'll bring it this way actually so here's 2.2 .2, and we'll bring 1.2 right there so as you can see the neighbors show up as routing information sources because these are neighbor routers from whom I am getting routing information and you can see as well that my router ID is 192.168.0.1 another important uh, a set of output here very important set of output are the K values right so we've got bandwidth and delay which are K1 and K3 respectively and again remember by default these are the two values bandwidth and delay that are being used to come up with the to calculate the EIGRP composite metric and we're going to talk a little bit more about the composite metric uh, later in some of the other discovery activities but remember that it's K1 and K3 by default and if these values do not match between neighbors you will not be able to establish the neighbor adjacency in EIGRP the K values they must match right and I can't stress this enough they must match and so you can imagine that this is probably an area where uh, you might possibly see some output from two different routers uh, the show IP protocol output on two different routers and the K values will be different they won't tell you that but then maybe you're gonna get asked these two uh, uh, routers are trying to form an, adja an EIGRP adjacency and it's failing why is that and then you would have to inspect the IP protocols output to figure out why and this is definitely one of the popular ways to basically break or um, uh, not allowed to establish the adjacency is to change the K values alright so let's go ahead and clear our screen here and now we're going to go ahead and we did the interfaces on the HQ router. All right, so we're just going to talk about passive interfaces. Now, remember, with RIP and G, what could we not do? Exactly. There's no way to do uh, passive interfaces with RIP and G. However, with EIGRP, we can control that, right? So we're going to go ahead and go into global config router EIGRP 
100 on the HQ router, and I'm gonna say passive interface default. Now, this is also another way. Remember we talked about using a, um, a quad zero wildcard mask when we're defining the IP address we or the, the IP address we want to match to have the EIGRP process run on that interface. You know, you would say 192.168.1.1 and then quad zeros. And EIGRP will only run on the interface with that exact IP address. So this is another way, if you're given a restriction that says, you know, you want to enable EIGRP only on the interfaces that are necessary. So what you could do is you could say passive interface default. And when we set passive interface, what does passive interface do? Well, passive interface is going to, it, just like it does in OSPF, and you should remember this from, um, this should be familiar from your CCNA studies with OSPF, is that passive interface is going to allow uh, the the subnet for that or whatever the subnet is for that interface to be advertised into the EIGRP process. However, on interfaces that you enable passive interface on, they are not going to send hello packets. And so it allows us to prevent the sending of EIGRP hello packets out interfaces where we have no EIGRP speakers. So Loopback interfaces are a great example of that. Um, LAN segments where we don't have any EIGRP speakers. Maybe we have just a layer two switch and then a whole bunch of hosts and no one needs to speak EIGRP. So, but we wanna advertise those networks, right? So that we can get the, the host networks out of the LAN segment advertised into EIGRP. So, but as you can see here, it's gonna tear down the adjacencies because I've put it so that I'm doing all interfaces as passive. So now no hello packets are being sent. All the adjacencies have been torn down. So here in the um, EIGRP config section, if I say no passive interface, ethernet zero, zero, I should get my adjacency back. And the same thing, we'll say serial one, zero. And then we're also going to say serial two, zero. Now, Something that, that's interesting here uh, that they show a little further down, they want me to do a do show IP protocols. And the reason we want to do this show IP protocols is here's another one, you know, you get that show IP protocols output and it says, you know, the two routers on, on serial 000 can't form an adjacency, why not? And they only show you this IP protocols output. You may want to look down here under passive interfaces to see is that serial 000 interface going to be down here? If so, then that's your problem, right? So now you can see that it's got passive interfaces listed here, and it shows us the loopback zero interface. Because remember, we did not unenable it. So if I say do show run section EIGRP, we put the we ran the no passive interface on Ethernet 00, serial 10, and 20. We did not do it for that loopback interface. So if I say do show IP EIGRP interfaces, you can see that the ethernet and the serial interfaces, those are the only ones listed here because we have passive, passived all other interfaces. Now, to close out our activity here, we're gonna take a look at some debug output. So on branch one, and this is gonna be some great output and it's gonna give us a chance to move back to router six, which was our original, the, uh, the actual real Cisco router in the background there, because we're gonna see some differences here between the 12 code and the 15 code when it comes to sending hellos and specifically when we're talking about loopback interfaces. So let's go ahead and say debug EIGRP packet hello. And what we're gonna see are the hellos that are being sent and received on all of the interfaces. So the first section there was serial 00. Um, and in fact, I think this is the only interface that we've got right now that is a non-loopback interface. So let's go ahead and we'll say you all, and that just means undebug all. And so what do we see? We see that the hello packets are being sent and received, right? 
on serial 00. This is my local serial 00. And I'm receiving them from my neighbor, 172.16.1.1. And remember that the hello packets, right, every five seconds, so, and just about every five seconds, you can see here we've got 1259.00.485, and it's 04102. So just about five seconds there. Now, what we don't see, and if I were to say show IP, and actually let me clear the screen there. If I were to say show IP EIGRP interfaces, you can see that the loopback interface on branch one, now remember this is branch one, <clears throat> excuse me, we did not do the passive interface command here on branch one, but on branch one, we see the loopback interface. So the question is why when I do the debug EIGRP packets hello, why am I not seeing any hellos being sent out the loopback interface? And so this is an interesting question, which is going to lead us back over here to a real Cisco 1841 router. So again, let me get this out of the way here. So we'll say show IP protocols because we want to take a look at our router ID. And there we go. Sure enough, it picked out the loopback address. Uh, from the 192.168.50.10, which was the highest numbered loopback address you can see here, right? That we had the, all those interfaces to choose from on the router. So it does pick that. And now let me go ahead and do this. Since it's not set, I'm going to go into global config and let's see if I say no. And we'll say do show IP uh, interface brief. And let me get the loopback number here. I think it's 450. So if I were to say no interface loopback 450, right, that's gone. So if I say do show IP protocols now, let's take a look. Do show IP protocols. What is the router ID? Well, exactly. The router ID has changed because remember, it's not preemptive. However, if I say do clear um, IP EIGRP, I believe this will do it. Do show IP protocols. Let's see if that did it. If not, we'll move on. But um, and where did it, I think it? We ran right through it there. Do show IP protocols. Yeah, so it's keeping it as that router ID clear IP EIGRP. Let me make sure neighbors. Whoops. Any I G H B O R S. Yeah, so even when clearing it, and I don't think it takes a star. Yeah, so even when clearing it, it didn't get rid of it. So we could go in with the EIGRP command. We're not going to, but again, it's, and this is to prove it's not preemptive, right? All right, so this router here, router 5, is running the 12.4 code. And show IP interface brief, he does have a loopback address, right? He has loopback address or loopback 5 with IP address 5.5.5.5. If I do a show IP EIGRP interfaces, you can see that EIGRP is enabled for loopback 5. So let's go ahead and say debug EIGRP, whoops, EIGRP packets, hello. And there's some other options here, so I can do a verbose. So I'll do verbose. So I want to see all packets that are floating back and forth. And there is the hello on the loopback, and that's what I was looking for right there. So we'll say, you all. So I've stopped the debug, and I want you to take a look at this here. So on 12 code, you can see that EIGRP is sending hellos on loopback 5. Now, when we were over here in the 15 code, we did not see this. And this is the section I want you to pay particular attention to, which is right here. So it said, and actually just this first section right there. So it said EIGRP packet from ourselves ignored. And let me clear this here. I want to get a little better grab here. It's this right here. It's this section right here. There you go. My, my uh, Wacom tablet is not the most accurate here. So there we go. So this is what we're interested in. So we receive a hello 
on loopback 5.5.5.5. Autonomous System 100, and it says EIGRP packet from ourselves ignored. So the loopback address um, is receiving a packet because again remember we're sending hello packets out all interfaces on which EIGRP is enabled and since we have it enabled on the loopback interface it's going to send the packet now again this is 12.4 code and this is a, a change between the 12 code and the 15 code because let me ask you this does it make sense to send the EIGRP hello out a, lo a local loopback address it doesn't in fact I can't think of any use case where that would be required or where that would be of benefit in fact all it's going to do is force the CPU to address the packet coming in and then force it to reply out to say packet from ourselves ignored well if we're going to ignore all of the packets from ourselves this begs the question why would you even send the packet in the first place, especially if it's going out a loopback interface? And again, remember, this is 12.4 code. So if I clear my screen and we step back over here to router 6, we already know that router 6, show IP interface brief, has a, a ton of loopback interfaces. You can see there, what is it, 8, 10? So it's got quite a few loopback interfaces. So if I say show IP EIGRP interfaces, you can see that all of those interfaces have the, or have the EIGRP process enabled. So let's do a debug EIGRP packet hello detail. Whoops. Let's go back and get EIGRP spelt properly. EIGRP. Now, we're debugging a ton of stuff here. However, you can see that the detail is a little different on the 15 code. So it's giving us much more information and I want you to watch, you can see these interfaces here that are showing up, FA01, FA01. Where do we not see hello packets being sent? So in the 15 code, and those interfaces are not passive, right? So in 15 code, it appears that it's been changed so that you are no longer sending the hello packets out loopback interfaces. So if I were to step back over here and we've got the loopback interface here, here and I said debug EIGRP packets or EIGRP yeah, packets hello detail and it doesn't like that detail option or verbose sorry on the 15 code it's verbose and put the verbose in here Let's take a look. Is it going to show that it's sending or receiving hellos on that loopback interface? And remember, this is 15.1. And it's not. It's only on the serial interface. So it appears that one of the changes, a significant change between the 12 code and the 15 code, is that what we're looking at right here, this explains why you don't see the hellos being sent on the loopback interfaces and only on the serial interfaces. Again, because why make the router, if it's simply going to ignore the packet, why make the CPU have to deal with processing the packet and then processing a message that says packet from ourselves ignored, right? So there you go. That's one of the major differences between 12 code and 15 code, specifically when we're talking about these hello messages that are being sent and received. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap the act activity up here. Step 11 and 12, we'll come over to the HQ router. And we're going to do the show IP EIGRP interfaces detail. And this is how you would see the uh, hello time and the hold timer. So you can see here the hello interval 60 hold time 180. Why is that on serial 20? So if we take a look at our diagram, serial 20 goes out a frame relay link. And what is frame relay? Remember, frame relay is non-broadcast multi-access. And on NBNA, NBMA networks, it's going to have a hold time of, or I'm sorry, hello interval of 60. The hello time is going to be 180. 
So make sure you pay special attention to that on NBNA, non-broadcast, multi-access network like Frame Relay, ATM, DMVPN, right? Watch for your hello interval and your hold time as they will be 60 and 180 by default. And then, again, the other caveat was that speeds faster than T1, it's going to be 5 or 15, right? Okay, and that's what it's at. Yep, and that's what it's got right down here in the bottom for you as well. So observe hello and hold timers in action. And we did, and it, oh, it wants us to shut the interface down. So on branch 1, we're going to go ahead and say, and I think we are debugging right now. Yeah, we're, we're debugging right now. So we'll go into global config. And we're going to go into interface serial ones oh, on the headquarters router. Sorry about that. Go to the headquarters router here, and we'll go into global config interface serial one zero. And what we're going to say is shut. So we're going to shut the interface down that faces branch one. And let's see how branch one uh, is going to respond to that. And did I get the right interface serial one zero? Yeah, serial one zero to branch one, and there we go. So we shut the interface down. Let me go ahead and say, do you all. So we stopped our debugging because we want to roll back up here. And actually, where was it? There it was, timer expired. So we receive a dual message, right? The diffusing update algorithm. We get a message telling us that the hold timer, the hold time expired. So three consecutive hello packets were missed over and so it would have been a 15 second period and the neighbor change is going to take the neighbor down right and you can see here the line protocol finally went down on this side however it was here that the neighbor adjacency is down and why is it down the hold time expired because again we shut down the interface on the other side which would stop the hello packets from coming in and after three consecutive, um, not whole packets, sorry, hello packets, after three consecutive hello packets have been missed, then we get this dual neighbor change syslog message that tells us that neighbor 172.16.11 is down. Our hold time expired. We missed three consecutive hello packets. All right. Well, this is a great activity to start out our journey and exploration into EIGRP. And so this is going to wrap up Discovery Activity 1. I hope that this is, um, we took a look at quite a bit here, right? We looked at three different ways that you can enable EIGRP on interfaces in classic mode. We also took a look at the debug output. Uh, we took a look at a lot of interface uh, and EIGRP process information. And we also got to take a look at the debug output. And we saw that on 12 code, you're gonna, it's gonna send EIGRP hellos out loopback interfaces. And then we saw the opposite of that on the 15 code where it looks like due to the fact that sending it out to yourself, it's gonna just ignore it anyway. Why are we even doing that? It looks like it's been turned off out in uh, 15 code. So that wraps up discovery activity two, which is configuring and investigating basic EIGRP. Again, outstanding Cisco Learning Labs activity. So thanks for watching and I will see you after the Labor Day weekend.